Hello everybody. This video accompanies Notebook 10 in the series of videos Exploratory Computing with Python. My name is Mark Bakker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. Today's topic is continuous random variables, more specifically the normal distribution. We start by importing numpy, matplotlib, set all the figures to be in line, and we also import the random subpackage of numpy and call it rnd. The rnd subpackage has a function called standard normal, which samples values from a standard normal distribution. And a standard normal distribution is a normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one, as shown here. And the only thing you have to provide it is a size, so we can draw 10 numbers from a normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. If I hit shift enter, I get 10 numbers from that normal distribution. If I hit shift enter again, I get 10 different numbers. Uh, once I've calculated these numbers, I can calculate the mean. And let's print it to the screen. Print the mean of this data. So let's call this these 10 values drawn from a standard normal distribution. Let's call that variable data. We print the mean and we print the standard deviation, which we can compute with the numpy function std for standard deviation. And you see that the normal, the mean of that standard normal of these 10 numbers is minus 0.18, close to zero, but not quite zero. And the standard deviation is 0 0.969, close to one, but not quite one. Why is that? Well, these 10 numbers are drawn from a standard normal distribution, which means um, their theoretical mean that where they are drawn from is zero and the theoretical standard deviation is one. But those 10 numbers, of course, don't have an exact mean of zero and an exact standard deviation of one. If you draw 10 different numbers, we get a different value for the sample mean, which is called, and the sample standard deviation. If you draw more numbers from the normal distribution, we get closer to that mean of zero and that standard deviation of one. So if you draw 100, you see if you do that a couple times, we get much closer to zero and 100, uh, zero and one, sorry. If you draw 1,000, we get even closer. Right now we are at 0 0.0 something for the mean, and we are at 0 0.971.02, 0.98, for the standard deviation. What now if you want to draw samples from a normal distribution with a different mean than zero and a different standard deviation than one? What we do is we uh, multiply the values drawn from the standard normal distribution by the standard deviation we want, and we add the mean. So let's make this cell a um, markdown cell, cell type markdown, and we say, all right, we have a mu, the mean of 20, and a me, um, standard deviation sigma of 5. Then we can do that by creating the data, rnd.standard normal. Let's draw again 1,000 points. We multiply that by the sigma we want, sigma is equal to 5, so we do sigma times that, and we want a mu or a mean of 20, so we add the mu. If we now print for this data what the mean and the, stand, the sample mean and the sample standard deviation is, you see it's close to 20 and close to 5, respectively. Next, let's look at the data. To look at the data, one of the things you can do is draw a histogram. Um, and matplotlib has a very nice function to call a histogram, uh, to draw a histogram. We first have to make one correction though. When we go to the very first code cell, I said import matplotlib as plt. What I should have said is import matplotlib.py plot as plt. Um, because that's the plotting part of matplotlib that we want to call plt. Now we can make a histogram. plt.hist, open parenthesis, I hit shift tab, I get help, and it tells us, just give us the array we want to look at. And there's a lots of other options and we'll talk about that in a minute. So the data we call data, we hit shift enter and here is our histogram. And it looks like a nice histogram. The mean is around 20 and we get a nice spread because the standard deviation is 5. 
If we draw different uh, set of that 1000 numbers, so we run this code cell again, and we draw the histogram again, we get a similar but slightly different histogram. Uh, what the histogram does is, is it, it divides the span of the data in a number of what's called bins, and it counts how many values there are in the bin, and that's what it draws a bar for. So this bin here runs from approximately 18 to 21 and a half maybe, and in that bin there's 250 values. So 250 values of the data are between 18 and 21.5. Now it's nice that Matplotlib determines which bins to use, but of course it'd be much nicer um, if you can specify the bins you want to see. And of course it can, so what you have, uh, if you go back here and you hit shift tab, you'll see you have a number of arguments and one of them is bins, so you can tell it how many bins to use. The default value is 10 and you give it a range. Um, that means it will make bins between, the min two, between two values, the minimum value you give it and the maximum value. So let's say we want to have 20 bins and we want to start, um, so this is bins, just to make it explicit, and the range is it will, st will start at zero and will end at 40. This is our histogram, um, it looks nice, uh, and the bins are now uh, have a size of two, right? Because we go from zero to 40 and we have 20 bins. So we have one from 20 to 22, 22 to 24, 24 to 26, and so on. And in the bin from 20 to 22, there are approximately 160 values. Now, what you would maybe would be even nicer if we don't show how many values we have in the bin, but what the probability is to be in that bin. And for that, we have uh, an argument that says normed equals true. That means it will normalize the vertical axis by dividing through by the total number of values. So if we do that, we get here that the probability of being in the bin from 20 to 22 is approximately 0.08 something. Uh, what we can do then we, is we can add to the same graph the graph of the normal distribution that we are drawing those values from. And the normal distribution we were drawing the values from, let's scroll back up, had a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 5. Now how do we get the probability density function, um, but probability distribution function of a normal distribution? For that there is of course also a nice function, and that function is part of the scipy, scientific python, the scipy.stats package. And we're going to import that. From scipy.stats import norm. And this norm package has a function called PDF. And what does PDF take? It takes the, maybe it will tell us, yeah, it doesn't tell us too much. It takes a bunch of X values. Those are the values along the horizontal axis. And then it takes two additional values. One is called um, the location and one is called the scale. And for this case, the location turns out to be the mean and the scale turns out to be the standard deviation. So we can define x to be np.lin space from 0 to 40. That's the x-axis, and we want to have 100 points. And then we want to calculate y to be the probability density function for all those x's, with the location being equal to the mu we defined above, and the scale being equal to the sigma defined, we defined above. And mu is 20, and sigma is 5. Then we can plot that, plt.plot, x, y, and let's make it red. There is our line. And now, of course, we want them on the same graph, so let's copy the histogram statement here and give that before we draw the line. And you'll see, ah, that probability distribution function for the normal distribution where we've drawn our values from nicely overlaps with our histogram of the data. The final thing I want to do is calculate the percentile. Let's calculate the 10 percentile and the 90 percentile. And NumPy has a function for that called percentile. So I'll take the percentile of the data and I want the uh, 10, well let's do the 10 percentile and the 90 percentile. And that tells us 13.9 and 26.2. That means that 10% of the data values, so 10% of the 1,000 values, so 100 values are below 13.93, that's the 10 percentile, and 26, um, 20, 90% uh, of the 
values are below 26, or you could say 10% are above 26 point. And we can store these into values, so it's the x10 and the x90. And we can then add those to the graph. So I'm going to copy this line and add it to this graph here. And for that, the plotting function has a nice uh, function called ax v line that will add a vertical line at position x10, and we make it black. Um, and we can also add a vertical line at x90 and also make it black. So we make these two lines. Um, in fact, it's not just giving it k, but I have to specify the color is k for black. If I now hit shift enter, it draws this nice graph. I should have put a semicolon here not to get that little handle back. And you now see the same figure we had before, a histogram of our data. The red line is the normal distribution that we have drawn our samples from. And the two black lines indicate the 10 percentile line and the 90 percentile line of the data. Now you can also add the 10 percent and the 90 percentile of the underlying distribution if you wish, but I'll leave that as an exercise. Um, that's all I have for you today. Hope to see you next time.